le monde, c'est nous. ANC re-elects President Cyril Ramaphosa. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa addresses the African Nations uh, National Council of the country. The ANC in South Africa, one of the historic ruling party on Monday, renewed its confidence in Cyril Ramaphosa to lead the movement that is the party and therefore run for the country's presidential election to take place next year, 2024. The Congress took place and voting held with Tsiri Ramaphosa having the top position. In the 2024 general elections, the ANC has no credible alternative to replace Tsiri Ramaphosa, who remains its best asset, as many analysts have noted. Tsiri Ramaphosa comes from a mother's family in Soweto, with activities as he struggled during the period of uh, appetite. He made his fortune in business well before returning to politics a decade ago. Recent polls show that Sri Ramaphosa has an affordable position as the leading top member in the ANC party. He remains popular also among South Africans. This is more than one party which has been torn apart by rivalry fractions as most of them have complained about the main parties not handling the situation of poverty in the country and struggling with e equality in South Africa. Crime and constant power outrage has also been one of the things that have been affecting the economics and these have been blamed on Sri Ramaphosa. So we'll talk about his re-election at the post of the realm in ANC and if he can take a chance to run for 2024 in South Africa. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome to Views on the Continent on your Pan-African channel, Afric Media. Today is the 20th of December, 2022, and we're going to have one main topic to you, uh, for you, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk about what's making news in South Africa, where they are already preparing for their presidential elections to take place next year, 2024. So the different parties are voting the members who stand as uh, the main runners of the general elections next year. And the main ruling party, which, which has been ruling South Africa for decades now, which is the ANC ruling party, voted uh, Sri Ramaphosa, that is, they re-elected him as their top member and the person they want to stand and defend their party next year, 2024. So he is one of the top members running for the post of presidency next year. Despite the scandals he has had in the country, we should just take note that he has been involved in uh, financial scandals in the country. Also, there are most people have been complaining about the appetite. I mean, there's a phobic situation that uh, uh, has been going on in South Africa. They are blamed it on the president not being able to manage it and therefore the economic outrage and the shortages in the country economic uh, crisis affecting the country and the rate of high crime rates in south africa all this have been blamed on the ruling party and the president in particular for not being able to handle this so today we're going to talk about if he stands a chance to win the elections next year and if the whole country will support him and can he do better so ladies and gentlemen this is what we are talking about I present to you the person in the studio with me to analyze this topic today. We have Mr. Diwum Emmanuel. Good afternoon. You're welcome to the program. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, Emmanuel. Okay. Good afternoon to the young girls of free media, especially those who <coughs> are glued to, to the set at this time to follow views on the continent. It's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for honoring our invitation. So let's watch this report on the elections which took place in South Africa that under the ANC party will be right back after that. Cyril Ramaphosa comes back as the ANC president. This after the conference rallied behind him as their preferred choice to lead the party again. After a fierce contest, this results now settled the debate on who will take the party forward. For comrade Mkiza Zuelini, his total is 1,897. And for Comrade Ramaphosa Cyril, his total is 2,476. For the deputy president position, Paul Mashatile emerged victorious. 
beating off challenges from Ronald Lamola and Oscar Mabuyani. Mashatile got 2,178 votes and Oscar Mabuyani managed 1,858 votes while Ronald Lamola received a mere 315 votes. And comrade Mashatile Paul, the total is 2,178. Gwede will also be returning as the national chairperson of the party. Comrade Masondo David, the total is 280. And the last result in this category, Comrade Matabata Stanley, the total is 2,018. Therefore, Comrade Mantashe Gwede is duly elected as a national chairperson. And for the first time since the unbending of the ANC, a woman was elected to the general general position. And for Comrade Ramuku Gwen, the total is 1,809. Nomvula Mukwenyane and Maropene Ramukopa have been elected first and second deputy secretary general, respectively. Mukwenyana Nomvula, the total is 2,195. For Ramukopa Marupini, the total is 2,000. 373. While Fikile Mbalula is now the Secretary General. Maswale Pumulo, total 1,590. Comrade Mbalula Fikile, 1,692. Comrade Mbimseni Ntuli, 1,080. Now with the ANC having settled its leadership race, the attention turns to its resolutions that will be keenly watched to see if the governing party stays true to its mandate. The party will also elect additional members of the National Executive Committee. Ntanta Khatani, SABC News, Johan. That report. Uh, so, Mr. Emmanuel, you watched the report. The ANC is the main ruling party of the country and it hurts the population. So, when it comes to election, it's like they have done the national elections of the country already, even though this is just the 55th edition of the ANC's the National General Congress, Assembly. General Assembly. So, that's when they voted. But when you look at the number of people under the ANC, which has been ruling South Africa for a very long time, it is as if uh, that's the voting that will take place in. 2024 and looking at Cyril Ramaphosa with all what has been happening in South Africa how do you feel about him he's 70 years old and uh, the capacity to give him the confidence of being at the top position of the country I must tell you it's, uh, it's an interesting uh, topic eh, Emanuela you know let me cue from where you you started mm -hmm. the, 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 the the numbers the figures they speak for for, for themselves yeah and it makes us to remember the songs that were chanted in the days of apartheid especially towards the end which became uh, a victory to the people of south africa we must say even if it was not a, a complete victory we must understand that anc that is african national congress party is a party that is very historic in the history of that country mm -hmm. it is through that party that nelson mandela got uh, his green light to become the first black president of that republic and given the role that Cyril Ramaphosa played in the end days of apartheid we must understand that he is an emblematic figure in that country despite the fact that in 1996 he turned down himself from the uh, stance of politics and became a very big successful businessman at one point in time he thought that he should come back to politics he came back he is succeeding i think his success could be linked directly to the role he played towards uh, the, the the ending days of apartheid and the role he played in raising nelson mandela into power 
because he's there is no way history can ever forget the role he played yeah. in the end days of apartheid. Mm -hmm. Now coming back to the question you asked, when I look at uh, the, 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 the numbers and then to, 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 to think about the, the scandals that have surrounded him and his age, I want to start by the, the I want to start from the point of that age. You know, it is already but very normal in Africa. One thing I have discovered, it, it's not been up to two months that I sat myself and I actually made a retrospect of the political landscape of many African countries. And I came to the realization and the conclusion that no African president wants to go for one mandate. Mm -hmm. And that is where we have a problem because uh, it would appear that even those African presidents who ascended to power through glory have decided to finally jeopardize the glory and descend through the back door. Because this man would have gone down into history if by himself he had opted not to come for the second mandate. And I will explain. Things were working out very well with him. We have seen the, the, the farm gate scandal. Yes. That was a scandal that was to take him down, mm -hmm. if not for the popularity that the NEC is having yeah. at the National Assembly, mm -hmm. the South African Assembly. That actually blocked the impeachment uh, uh, bill that was going to take him down. But then, only at the time when he announced that he was going to run for, for the second mandate, or for the next term, you saw how scandals started coming from everywhere. Which means uh, there is no holiness in politics, especially in Africa. And we must not limit it only to Africa. Africa uh, politics has remained a dirty game, both to the developed countries and the developing countries. We saw what became of Donald Trump in, in America. I am not like saying that because it happened in one of the countries where uh, we believe that has the definition of democracy, it, it must happen here in Africa. Mm -hmm. I think those countries can also learn from us. But it becomes worrisome when at 70, with all the scandals surrounding him, he's putting out his best smile at the time he has been positioned to take over that party. I mean, to, to, to lead that party again to the next election. I have this belief that power has become so sweet in Africa to a level where people have chosen to lose all their glory to remain in power. Because just imagine that with all these scandals at this time, he goes and certainly he will be reelected. Mm -hmm. that, that's a fact. That's what I said. For those who are following this program, yeah. they can name, they can know this program today. Mm -hmm. I have it's a series of presidential elections yes, that's taking place. There, there are three presidents in Africa I foresaw that they were going to be re-elected. People said a lot of things about the program I did. And of course, some of them were honest enough a year, two years later to call me back to say, hey, young man, you saw it coming. So I want to think that his second term of office will be marked by a lot of scandals. Worse than what he has Worse already. than what he has already. But, but why, why can you not think that he, can, he, he could actually learn from his mistakes? Because when you do something and most people note that thing. How many when African presidents back... have actually learned from their mistakes? Let me start giving you examples. Mm -hmm. We have President Bia of Cameroon who have learned zero lessons from his past mandates. When you go to Sudan, you have a man there. You saw what just recently happened. Mm -hmm. He has not learned anything. I mean, go to Gabon. These are lessons that only you and I, observers, are learning. Those who are actually on that on those seats have been learning zero lessons. If they were learning lessons, let me tell you how these lessons would have been learned. Looking your counterpart in another country, falling in the same trap of scandals, hooking up to power and committing the same errors would have been enough lessons for you to learn mm -hmm. not to hook up to power, Emanuela. So I think 
These African uh, presidents, they are not learning any lessons. They have not been learning lessons. So, it will be a kind of a miracle if Ramaphosa, because I know he will become, he, he will maintain himself there. It will be a kind of a miracle if he actually turns the hands of time to favor him and favor the population. In your editorial, you said one thing about the xenophobic ne uh, ne uh, nature of South Africa today. Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't really share the idea that he should be blamed in total for that. Because he is just a president. He has people who are collaborators working with him. Yeah. He has one of the highest areas where the xenophobic uh, utterances are coming from are from the Ministry of uh, of works and civil service you know, of that country. Yes. And of course, you know, as it is true that as the president, he can call the Ministry of Labor to order, he can call the Ministry of Public Service to order, but then those who are seated there seem to have been very happy with the xenophobic, xenophobic nature of that country. Why? Well, because it's tarnishing the image of, because it's, it's tarnishing the image of South Africa? Yes, it's tarnishing, it's tarnishing the image of South Africa. So, the blame should be shared. It should not exclusively be the blame of Ramaphosa. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact that he is a president. And we know that, I know why people have the impression that he should be blamed squarely. Because if you take somebody, say for example, like from Cameroon or Gabon, the person would think that the, the president should bear the blame entirely. Because in their respective countries, the presidents are the alphas and the omegas. Everything begins from them and ends with them. But I want to think that the setup in South Africa is not the same. So, those who are watching this program, the South African model is a bit different from the models in most French colonies in Africa, where the president is at the center of everything. So, I think Ramo, Ramo, uh, Cyril should bear the, 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 the blame, but not the way people are thinking that he should bear the blame. Definitely, he should bear the blame, but not the way people should think he should handle things. Um, but let's talk about the way he handled the situation, because as you said, everything cannot be blamed on him. But when something erupts in the country, definitely yeah. the government needs to look for a way to settle it. Because you saw the way things were destroyed, people looted, the strangers, like foreigners, were confused, running helter skelter, and the government could be the only one that could calm down the situation so how do you think he had his government handled the situation because it's one thing to cause a problem and it's another thing to solve, solve it. it so he was he could not have been the cause <laughs> of the problem and now as a president no, and the uh, government yes. how do you think he handled the situation because that has made most I, africans wondering i subscribe to your to your question mm -hmm. i i think i agree with you as a president if you have collaborators that can cause your reign to be in shambles mm -hmm. It is your responsibility to put them to order. There are two different ways of putting them to order. Either you call them brutally to order while they are still in office, or you put them out of the office and bring in those you think and you deem are fit for such a job. Because at times, uh, when we talk about cabinet reshufflement in many counties in Africa, you discover that the reshufflement comes by the same people are in the same position. Mm -hmm. I think that is where uh, Ramaphosa's problem came. Mm -hmm. Because with all the destruction, you know, one of the main reasons why America is still being respected is because it has re remained a, a country of hyphenated races. I mean what do you mean by hyphenated races? When I talk about hyphenated races here, almost all the races in the world have a place in America. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's that's a factor. Eh? Yeah. Yes. Eh, and uh, go, a eh, 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 somebody from Saudi Arabia, Morocco. I mean, all the countries in the world. That's why America has become a hyphenated racist country because. Every country can be proud to say, I have eaten the dollars. You see, despite all the atrocities America could be committing, 
to other countries out of America. Mm -hmm. America still has a respect mm -hmm. because that respect and protection for strangers has always been uppermost. You will bear with me that even those who are called Ambazonians, the Nigerians and others, they have had and found self heaven in U.S. Because until you break their own laws, mm -hmm. you are and you are a citizen of that country, commit your atrocities elsewhere, the constitution and the laws of that country protect you. But then, South Africa failed to copy that model. Because for strangers, to, because they are, they, we have people who left South Africa, abandoned all their capital there yeah. because of their trade, the trade, the destruction. Some run from there for their lives, some, some were had beaten. To beat, we were beaten, some had to, had to run for their life. I think uh, that is a minus for the Ramaphosa's government. It's a minus. And what makes you believe that in the next Monday, it's not going to happen it's again. It's not going to happen again. It may ever happen worse because he might have been preparing already for his retirement. What will you do for him? Nothing. African presidents are already used to bearing bad names before leaving offices. We we have seen a lot of them. We we saw the man who ran uh, and was in Equatorial Guinea. Finally got back to his country. Despite the fact that a jail term was hanging over him, he went there and he walking free. So these people are already very used to bad names. So nothing bad is bad for them again. So I think that as somebody who played a vital role in the days of apartheid, he can still play a vital role now. Mm -hmm. So the only thing we, you and I can be doing is appeal to his conscience and his cabinet if there is a way he can turn back the hands of time again i am still afraid because when a president starts having a lot of scandals in africa it's like the president he moves from bad to worse i don't want to be naming them again because i know of any president of almost all the president have, have have been surrounded by scandals in Africa have moved from bad to worse at a time when the people were thinking expecting that, they could, that yeah. expecting that they could make a change maybe through that change it could be a kind of functional apology mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. it has not turned out to be what the people thought and other people maybe let's just think that as he goes for the next next mandate of which he's going to win let's just think that he makes a difference from those who have failed to make a difference let's talk about crime rates in south africa because when it comes to that south africa has one of the highest when you look at reports and follow nigeria is another country with another big one when it comes to crime rates and all everything uh, okay prostitution yeah okay. yes south africa That's yes. A, no, yeah yes, south africa uh, that is also official like yes. let's talk about it because it's like people are not safe or they are just on particular quarters it's like when you're let me say you're in your own in bastos if you're not in bastos that means you're not general. yes you're not you're not free you cannot do anything you're just afraid if you're not home by six or five you know that no this is how has he handled that? He, he has not probably provided <coughs> jobs for. We know most South Africans they have a fault because most of them don't go to school, and that was one of the things that were discovered during this xenophobic period because they were complaining about their jobs being taken. But and when like, they were asked for certificates, certificates, they certificates were not coming forth. Yeah, so most of them are not educated, so they are unable to have good jobs. And so when you are unable to have good jobs, they have just the minor jobs, and now they. They, they, they tend probably, to chase the foreigners. Yes, and probably that could be one of the reasons of the high crime rate. So, what has the president done, president done to you, or what should he do in order to solve this? Because it's not done yet. Next year is another time, and other things. Will Just come like up. any other African president, I remember uh, uh, in the face of this uh, xenophobic acts, he pro that is when, uh, like you are saying, before many people were discovered not to have been educated, it is because. They wanted to use uh, whether they call it national or to offer some jobs to some people. Mm -hmm. That was a kind of struggling to appease yes, the situation. and take off people from the streets. Yes. Like when you are, you are having something yeah, to, to do, dis to disperse people from streets to offices. Mm -hmm. But 
unfortunately, those who were even at the forefront of this act yeah. did not have qualification. And it became more complicated. Yeah. I don't think the government at that time was supposed to take jobs that demanded high qualifications to offer to those who were not qualified. Yeah, it's not going to be effective. But of course, the government could still do something. Uh, that, that in the industrial sector of that country, the I think the government could ship these people to pump them into the labor demanding uh, uh, warehouses, warehouses to, or port, to be porters. And stuff. Yeah. And again, the rule of law was not actually visible in the face of all these atrocities. I don't know whether it was another way to pamper the citizens of that country mm -hmm. or there was something behind that you and I did not know. Because like in other countries, we would have been told that these are the legal measures or the judicial measures that were taken by the government that should such a thing repeat itself. If it keeps reoccurring, it means that there's a green light for the perpetrator. We know, though, I remember the press conference that was done. They said uh, the, uh, the, the police force have been added, the military have been added to help the police force curb what is happening. But we saw it still happen again. And probably well, the, the number. Were added, mm -hmm. What was the modus operandi of the addition? Were they added to come and be watching the atrocities on, and the perpetrators going on? Definitely, were to, they help, watching to, to arrest. Curb? Yes. They actually, a lot of people were arrested, though. A lot of like, people were arrested, but were released, relaxed. Yeah. Were relaxed just days mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. And the worst part of the, uh, of the relaxation was that they were relaxed and they were not actually given something to be doing. Yeah, see. they were just released. Yeah, they were just released. And what, in such a case, the government should try to contain such people by looking for urgent measures. Yeah. You know, there are some urgent situations that warrant urgent measures. In such a case, the government would have taken emergent, I mean, I mean urgent measures to make sure that these people who are arrested as they are being released, there is a way we are going to contain them by even giving them a job. Even if it's uh, an odd job, the odd job should be well paid. You know, at uh, at some point in time, they could also benefit from the illiteracy. Mm -hmm. yeah? If to benefit from the illiteracy means the government should pay them somehow mm -hmm. in order to deter them from continuously, because <clears throat> we are fighting for a united uh, a united Africa wherein our borders should be free. We have been fighting for this for a very long time. Just think of a situation where borders are free and some other countries become so much so much hostile to strangers streaming into their countries it means that we are opening borders to open up new fights within the african continent mm -hmm. and this should be a lesson not just for the south african government it should be a lesson to almost all african government be it cameroon be it nigeria be it Gabon. when people are idle because they lack job you know, it becomes a breeding and fertile ground for crime. For crime. Crime with prostitution. Like in South Africa, they're even making it official. I think a week ago I read an article that talks about the South Africa and uh, prostitution in the days ahead. That nobody will have the right to even insult a prostitute. I read, I exploited a, a document, a magazine, a week or two weeks ago. And I was asking myself, where is this country actually moving to? Okay, they have officialized it. Prostitutes, henceforth, shall have the right to be respected and to be defended even in court. But then, if actually that is true, it means that it is either the government is at a tight corner as far as unemployment, fixing unemployment in that country is concerned, or something is happening in that country that they have to import from the Western world. Because in some countries of the Western world, prostitutes have their rights and they're being respected. Which is something which is not African at all. Definitely. It's not African. Um, let's talk about this other part, like economic crisis. 
And that economic crisis is not only something for South Africa because it seems as if 2024, when you look at all the changes that have been made in a couple of countries with their physical year, their financial budget, it is going to be tight. Rising prices is affecting almost every country. And in this article we read uh, concerning the election, South Africa too is going through that. And most people have blamed the government for being unable to solve the economic crisis in their, crisis in their country and rising prices. I, let me take this opportunity to tell African population it does not suffice to blame the government. It is enough that if a government is not working, let the population start looking for means to out that government. And one of the people who think that if uh, a leader or if a president is not leading well or ruling well, the population has the right to take up that population. It is true that we have most dictators in Africa who have been using guns to remain in power. But if the population comes together, this blame game will stop. We will start, uh, I think the new year is coming, and I think it's a, it's a new year gospel. I'm already sending it out to our African population. The gospel should be that we should learn to take off lazy presidents from their post, rather than blame and blame all the time. Just look at the case where somebody is in power for 40 years. He has actually siphoned all the country's money. 80% uh, of the country's uh, financing goes for his security, his personal security. He visits where he wants, whereas the population is willing in penury. But then the population has been complaining for 40 years. After the complaint, Tell me a country where complaints ever took off a president from a seat. And I will tell you that you are lying. I mean, the population should empower African civil societies, empower African opposition parties to take off such people because R Ramaphosa... No, but you know in Sudan, complaints took off uh, Umar al-Bashir. Yes, prices, complaints prices, took him anyway, off. Anyway, it's because the people rose. The, the, the complaints took him off. No, complaints did not take, take, take him off. The people rose. The people rose up. Mm -hmm. And the prices of bread. Yes, sugar. people rose up. And that's the example that people should follow. In Mali, people rallied behind Asimi Goita, Asimi Goita mm -hmm. and took off theater. Whom I think was supposed to still be there today, serving the interests of somebody. So I want to think that as you ask the question, it is true that the economic crisis is affecting the whole world. But then every government has a way of dealing with uh, her own economic crisis. The case of South Africa, I will not lie to you that I don't really know the measures that have been taken by that government in place. All of them are so focused on the elections now yes. that the elections have passed yes. and he saw that he will start every, the measures will be put I want now. to tell you that every African president is as good as the word good when it comes to focusing on election. If it comes to economic crisis, none of them has a solution. I think just a few of them like Kagame have struggled to like make their population the people proud uh, and uh, uh, the Mussolini or what was that? But then the rest, the population is used to blaming. So I want to think that if South Africa actually thinks that his government has not been up to the task of meeting the economic challenges, the polls are by the corner. Let them go to the poll, root him out. But I'm afraid they will root him in. And after that, they will start complaining. Complaints will remain. Complaints, complaints. So Africa, Africa is sick. Eh? I think uh, I am not, not even longer again for the post of presidents in Africa. Because the president has not been delivered. And the population keeps babysitting them with complaints every day. If there was a way, the post of the presidency could be scraped off from all African countries, at least for now. and make it look like the UN, where we see only the general, the, the, the secretary general visible mm -hmm. for some time, it will be better. 
<laughs> it's going to be better for you, definitely. Uh, let's watch mm -hmm. this other report, which talks about some of the scandals uh, President Siri Ramaphosa. We're also going to talk about good Corruption. things. There's always, yeah, no, no. there's always a good, the bad, the ugly. Yes. So. Before we come to good things, yeah, I yes. think if the people are angry with Ramaphosa, it's because when he took uh, the presidency, uh, when he took the, uh, at the helm of his mm -hmm. party, after Jacob Zuma, after Zuma, when he took presidency, his first word was that I vow to root out corruption in my country. Mm -hmm. And up to 2022, I think he has done his best, but the best has not been enough because we still get a lot of news and information about corruption and uh, one of it they say he's involved because there's a huge sum of money which was stolen and then they say it was found in his house exactly there was a sum of five hundred thousand us dollar cash mm -hmm. that was found yeah, that's and nice. that is where the people ba were basing the argument to impeach him mm -hmm. not until he was blocked at the national assembly by the majority you know what they call uh major ob obesity <laughs> uh, the, 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 the majority you know what african the, especially the french african is called majority obese so that is where his luck came from otherwise he would not have even succeeded to go through mm -hmm. to be behind the next monday mm -hmm. so that is exactly the sum that they're saying and this is the same thing that landed zuma to problem yeah houses were freeze material were freeze but i mean and he's it's like he wants to follow the footsteps of Zuma. But whatever the case, anyway, he has done good Zuma had like, many, like, like, many corruption many scandals. Corruption this, scandals this, this is just one. Let's yeah, yeah, let's see benefit one. of that. <laughs> Can we have a, the other video which talks about uh, some of the crisis he has been in? We'll be right back after that. Facing an electricity crisis, weak economic growth, serious socioeconomic challenges, businesses hoping these challenges will take priority. The South African Chamber of Commerce and Industry calls for a resolution of infrastructure challenges, crime and security, and strengthening of public institutions. It's to get very serious about uh, you know, the economic fortunes of South Africans. Uh, we are still very worried that the economic recovery plan of government is not really bearing the fruits. So I think the most important is that we want to have a very clear and stable economic policy that is driven by a number of the commitments and the implementation that they promised the country. The Black Business Council is calling for a cabinet reshuffle to speed up policy implementation. We hope that he, he will make changes to the executive and make sure that those people who are not uh, doing their job in the, in the executive in government uh, are, are removed and moved uh, so that he can only be left with people who will be implementers. Labour Federation Kosatu has also welcomed the newly elected leadership, applauding the ruling party for also electing women leaders. The first thing that government needs to do is to deal with corruption. Because you are not going to implement anything that must take this country forward for as long as there are people who are looting the, the, the state uh, uh, at the same time. The Labour Federation says it will address issues of collective bargaining in the public service as well as the private sector when it engages with the newly elected ANC leadership. Gloria Safagomusi, SABC News, Johannesburg. But uh, those are some of the complaints. First of all, power shortage. It's almost like uh, South Africa is getting to be Nigeria because when it comes to power shortage, uh, South Africa said they have recorded the worst this year than ever before. For Nigeria, we know it's something almost normal. You can be in Nigeria for a Why month. Why do you leave Cameroon and talk about Nigeria? <laughs> no, Nigeria is worst. We're talking about countries that like you can be for a month without electricity. But they are more advanced than we do. Definitely. In have, other aspects. They have alternative energy. In no, other aspects. They have alternative. No, let's remain in that aspect. Mm -hmm. Even in that aspect, the industries that are in Nigeria are not far in control, mm -hmm. which means that they are more advanced because of their knowledge in alternative energy yeah that we should be saying true let's not leave our roof where the uh, rain is leaking to go and talk about nigeria cameroon in terms of energy is far far below now even south africa as they're complaining it means that some of them if you carry them you put to cameroon they are just finished uh and that is that should be something very serious in south africa because that country in terms of development should even be older than us mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. and given the evolution 
the various evolution. It's one of the most developed African countries. Second in that country, that's the country that was able to host the first World Cup. I mean, a country that on the continent, the the, the 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 best continental diplomats or whatsoever, and the, the technocrats. If in 2022 they are complaining about electricity or energy, it means that something is wrong. Something is wrong. And like you got the the, 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 the woman said there. Yeah. You cannot take any country forward when there is corruption. Yeah. What has killed most African countries is corruption. Mm -hmm. And the worst of it is that in this domain of corruption, most of them, the country that they are looting, as she said, the, 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 the resources that they are looting, they don't loot it for the benefit of the country. They loot it to go and keep out foreign banks Capital generating plan, income and generating everything. income where there is already available income mm -hmm. they go adding it capital flight so capital flight is actually something that in the 21st century every african country if we were if we must stop corruption and take african countries forward mm -hmm. there is one thing which is very urgent and i insist we must freeze the accounts of our ministers in foreign banks. If you must steal, that is to say, it is a new normal that we must steal. Steal it and let it circulate in your country. Because just by letting it circulate in your country has an impact in the internal economy. Mm -hmm. So it, it, is, it is part of killing. When you have to take it, hide it somewhere. And then your country is kind. If the if the freeze their accounts, they're going to open in, in different names because right now here yeah, they have accounts even that, for unborn that, babies. They have accounts for people who don't even exist. But I think with the level of technology we have now, we can trust them. Have you ever asked yourself why people do not leave from Europe to create their account in Africa? Why is the reverse not very true? I think electronically. They are up to date. They can monitor. Because if creating an account with a different name has become a trick for them to succeed, mm -hmm. I think their thumbprints remain the same, which can be traced mm -hmm. electronically. So uh, it's, it's really sad to also hear that South Africa is going through what other countries are going through mm -hmm. in terms of energy. Mm -hmm. It's sad. And I think. Mr. President, if you are fighting to take up another mandate, hear the cries of the people. We are only here analyzing from the distance, but those are people talking from South Africa, yeah. which means that they are feeling the pain. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's easy to stamp out corruption? Because we are talking about corruption. Corruption exists in almost every country, even the yeah, best yeah, countries no, in uh, the world that I we say the U.S. everywhere there's corruption. I so think, sometimes uh, we should not ago, crucify. A year <laughs> ago, I was in this studio with your colleague Rita Moto, mm -hmm. with my very good friend uh, Shune Siaka, who made us to understand that corruption was as old as prostitution in the Bible, mm -hmm. and that it was very difficult for a president to take just forty years and stamp out corruption. But let me tell you how it goes: if you are not a corrupt leader. Corruption will not flourish under your, your under your your, your your reign. Remember the, the, in the, the, the what J. Rowling did in Ghana. Mm -hmm. We are not saying that he stamped it out to zero, but there is a point in time where you can say, "Look, my ministers, we have stolen enough. People are crying. Can we come back to the table while we have stolen? Then we share." Then we give half back to the population. Official because, giving back. Yeah, official giving back. We are that's a state apology to the mm. citizens. Mm. It has happened elsewhere. Why? Yes, even Saudi Arabia, the new prince, he put all those ministers, put them in a hotel and said, Everybody, this is an account number, just put everything. Yes, together. just just push it. That was the kind in. of house arrest. They were there for almost a month. Every penny put. And they put. They put. They and this, they were, and the they money free. they took back. And, and they're, they're free, free yes. Within, free within, within two weeks, everybody had given back almost everything. Yes. And he, he released them. I think that is the, the best way to fight corruption. <laughs> to fight corruption, we must not use guns or prison. I have been saying this thing. 
They put them in a five star hotel, comfortable, yes. everything. Just give an account. I've been saying this I'll thing. I'll give you two weeks. <laughs> you know, look, the best way to fight this thing is that first thing is that we are very sure that they are embezzled. Mm -hmm. That first. That you are certain. We are certain. Yes. Now that we are certain, let's make friends to catch a thief, make friendship with that thief. Put them in a hotel like you have, you have like, like yeah, that's what saying. the priest did. Even go the 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 the, the J. Rowling's way. Tell them officially. I know that you, 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 you. I know you have been better. I know you have stolen. Tell them it is time to bring it back and save the common man. Keep the one that can save you. But I think this is the percentage that I must see in the state treasury, and it is done. Because. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if you and I, they put us there, will measure the same way. I don't know. See, we are not yet there. Mm. The money is money is the root of all. Root Sometimes of some people talk because they have not touched it, and when they <laughs> touch it, they get into the top position. You don't Look recognize them anymore. To steal, to touch it, it is not only because you have seen fabulous songs in front of you. Somebody who grows up with a record of taking a little before putting it back. If you put him, that why when you look across Africa, you see even ministers who are ex convicts, mm -hmm. stolen thieves that we know that he has stolen here, he has stolen here, he has stolen here. Yet, do you think that if you make that kind of a person a minister, he will stop stealing because you made him a minister? It's like taking a rat to go and block a hole with corn, and then you expect that rat not to eat the corn. So corruption, like you are asking the question, it's, it's, it's really difficult. It's difficult to stamp it out. But there's a possibility of reducing it to a lower level, to a lower degree. If the will is there. And the will can only be there if you yourself, you are free. Mm -hmm. Because you will not tell me that a president lives in Africa, he has assets almost littered everywhere in Europe, and his ministers know that he has assets everywhere in Europe. And then you want to tell your minister not to have assets elsewhere. Then you are joking. It becomes a child's plea. Yeah, they probably need to do the John Magufuli way. For sure. Everything back home. Back home. Nothing out. And if something has to be out, it means that you yourself have to be out. Yeah. But then how many of them will do it? Because they, they, some, sometimes you're even afraid of the end. You have seen the couple of people who have tried to do that. How did they end? Yes, uh, the Gaddafi, the Sankaras, Magufuli should fall in that line. It's difficult. Yeah, it boils down to the fact that leadership is difficult. Yeah. So if you are ascending to leadership, you have to know one that sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. Who, to whom are you sacrificing? Mm -hmm. It is for your people. And why are you sacrificing? You need a legacy. And to keep this legacy, you have to take the stone, the hardest one. Definitely. But when you see. Those who have decided to go contrary to what I've just named, they will choose. They live longer. They live longer. But satisfy have nothing to show for. And then finally quit the stage in shame with no leaders. Let's talk about the good things. Uh, we have a couple of minutes to the end of the program. Ramaphosa, at least, when it comes to employment in South Africa, South Africa has recorded one of the best. As you said, some people do not have certificates, but those who were out there who had, South Africa has recorded the best time that the government has tried to integrate people into the government when it comes to employment i think every country wants that that their citizens should be employed we see the brain drain that is taking place in africa crossing some of them are dying in the mediterranean sea but they do all crossing in libya they are sold as slaves okay. but still yet they are still on the way no matter what you say because they can barely feed but if you have a country that the president tries to stabilize things even though it can never be the best because it's not easy to control people it should be applauded for that well, uh, <clears throat> he should be applauded for that. Just like corruption that we were saying a while ago, unemployment is something you cannot completely deal with it. And when people are hungry, they and, they know, and they know that you are not hungry, they must tap you yeah. as the source of their problem. <laughs> yes. So before you become a president, you need to know that you must be tapped as a source of the problem of those who cannot live up to expectation mm -hmm. in that domain like we are saying he has done his best mm -hmm. if even best, when he called that come and work they don't have certificates yeah, don't have go certificate. to school they don't go but, to school yes. and at a certain age you cannot go to school you cannot call me uh, in march 
to go to school and then harvest degrees to come out in December. It's no, it does not work. It does not it work. Does not work. It can't work like that. It's the same thing with Equatorial Guinea. The president is trying his best for people to go to school, but when you call people who have certificates, you can count them. And finally, everybody is almost in the same pot yeah, of soup. Yangema. Yes. Ah, yes. Uh, but uh, with his, also his own way of doing things also, mm -hmm. uh, we shall have time to talk about uh, it. Yeah, Guinea. definitely. So I, I, I think that uh, no human being is born perfect. perfect. We cannot claim that perfection is art. But then we can try and die fighting to be perfect. Because I think he has faced socio -econ economic political problems like we followed in that report, yes. but he has tried to mitigate them somehow. Mm -hmm. That is why he's still there. That's why arms have not been flying in his country. Yes. That, that is why explains the absence of a civil war yes. in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Because from the reaction of South Africans that have observed from a distance, mm -hmm. If they were not relatively fine, there would have been a civil war in our country. Or they would have already been devising a means to unseat the president, even through a brief method. But it has not worked. But what I am appealing for is that, as he's eyeing for the next mandate, let him try to right the wrong that he could not right during this first mandate. Mm. And to know that unemployment is a disease, yeah. it's a terror, it's a pandemic even, because when people are idle, mm. uh, you will see ph phenomena coming up like the microbes, like the case of Cameroon, yes. you see in Nigeria, like the case of uh, those uh, boys who are, who are waiting, only learning how to operate the gun. Yes. When there's an instability in an African country, the higher they, they, they go there to fight. Mercenaries. Mes good, that's the word uh, I was looking for. Mercenaries, which is, of course, not very good for the image of Africa. Mm -hmm. So I think every African president, not only in South Africa, should try to, first of all, look at the unemployment situation of his or her country. I think he can end the applause. And before earning that loss, you will need to know that some people were not born to die in power. I follow today when a South African uh, citizen said the president needs to change the executive. Yes. Those who are working, working. With him and that means they and know. Cannot deliver. Yeah, they yeah, know. They know. They yeah. know. Yeah. There are people in that government who are not delivering, mm -hmm. but they are still there. Yes. And in that case, it provokes those who have the capacity, those who have gone to school and have the capacity to, to deliver and have not been given the chance. Mm -hmm. So I have always thought of a situation where a leading party incorporates opposition members who are capable. Yes. It can go a long way. Yeah, because they to, have other vision to be yes, in the country. It can go a long way uh, to appease the political and social tensions in such countries. Mm -hmm. I think those are things that the presidents, uh, particularly in South Africa, sometimes when we speak and we live here, people are asking us, we are giving good analysis about other countries, what have we done to our own country? South Africa is in Africa. Cameroon is in Africa. And you people are doing a great job because you go round and round. I think such people need to even be getting to you people thanking you people and appreciating you people because most of the time they're asking oh you people talk about ghana i left here the last time the people are writing you people go talking about ghana no we uh, this is a pan-african channel yes and as a pan-african channel we talk about africa in the continent its entirety yes the we continent focused we don't the focus on any country. particular country so when the need arises for us to talk about cameroon we talk definitely we talk about nigeria definitely. we talk about everybody and the worst of it is that such question marks even come from Cameroonians who cannot go to the media to yes. talk about it. They don't even accept it. They the don't even accept to talk about it. The only so right some of will take the risk to come here, don't start writing us, you sit in your Yaoundé, your Boya, your Bamina, you start writing asking, why are you going This station has done a lot in talking about issues in Cameroon. And we must appreciate 
even the viewers must appreciate. Yeah. So that that's just what I wanted to say. Because sometimes people just say things for saying sake. Thank you very much. Last words for South Africans. <clears throat> what do we hope for them? Twenty twenty four. South Africa, I think when it comes to election, you people equally registered a mark of maturity in this continent. Mm -hmm. And many countries have been thinking that if they can talk about democracy, yeah. partly or fully in Africa, they cannot complete the statement without South Africa. Mm -hmm. So, uh, make the whole world get, pass a message as your polls are coming up mm -hmm. next year. I mm -hmm. think it should be 2024. 24, yeah. It's, it's another time for you people to use the ballot box and speak. Let the ballot box, let your vote be your gun. Let your vote be your message. Send it across. If Ramaphosa did not live up to expectation. They still have two years, eh? Still we are still ending 2022. Yeah, they yeah. have 2023, they then have 20, so they have time to yeah. look mobilize. at exactly and look at what is happening. I mean, mobilize. See if he can See correct the wrong. Yeah. And then you will know what if to you do. can come up with uh, a political <laughs> Maradona of that country. Yeah. And then subsequently you put the person you are going to put and start blaming when the person starts failing you. <laughs> but be rest assured that the person there was put by you people. Definitely. The person was put by you people. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Emmanuel Zibu, thank you very much for your time. It's always a pleasure. I want to greet my beautiful daughters who are watching, Kela, Kelin, and Karen, and their mother back home. And I want to use this platform to say Merry Christmas yeah. and Happy New Year to your management, yes. to the viewers, mm -hmm. to the panelists mm -hmm. who have been supporting doing their best doing to, their come best around, to come around despite around. their busy schedule and to everybody in africa we want i want to think that uh contrary to what people think that the year coming forward will be difficult the year will be difficult but it will meet very tough people and will make the difficulties to become our possibilities thank you very much that's that's it a good a one pleasure. merry christmas to everybody i'll be with you tomorrow at 11.30 to analyze newspapers. So see you again tomorrow. Have a beautiful day in Africa Media. Bye-bye. Le monde, c'est nous.